All right. So AS Economics, uh, MCQs, and in fact, the most recent MCQ paper we have at this time, at least, that's Feb March 2018. So let's proceed. We'll be doing 10 MCQs per video and checking myself after every um, 10, 10 MCQs. So let's go on with one. Which statement about economics is not correct? Economic actions can often produce unexpected side effects. Well, yeah, they can. E economic thinking is usually based on logical reasoning at the margin. Mm, well, one could say so. It, you know, economic thinking is does have some logical reasoning, and a lot of that reasoning does involve the concepts of uh, the margin. You know, so in in well, you haven't studied a lot of the concepts. Look at the margin in AS, but generally to figure out the profit maximizing point that you study in your A2, you look at marginal cost, marginal revenue. With regards to externalities, the socially optimum level is marginal social benefit equated with marginal social cost. So marginal, uh, so the margin is a very important uh, tool in economic thinking. C, the use of scarce resources to produce a good always has a cost. Well, that's also correct because you always have uh, an opportunity cost. D, the value of a good or service it involves a purely objective judgment. Well, not really, right? And in fact, I'm, I'm surprised to see, see these options in AS, to be honest, because you learn a lot about this in A2. But the idea here is the value. Now, the value isn't just in the monetary, monetary terms of price. Value also basically includes the satisfaction or the utility you derive from that good or service. And the satisfaction that perhaps I derive from eating, uh, I don't know, from, from eating Kit Kat could be different from the satisfaction someone else derives from eating Kit Kat. Our utilities could be different and hence our utilities are uh, subjective. They're not objective. They vary person to person. So that's the idea. And that's why that's wrong. So it's your answer. Question two, a farmer is able to grow three crops X, Y, Z on his land. A farmer decides to grow at most two crops in any year. So uh, at the very max, it's only going to be two crops. The table shows six possible combinations of units of output of the three crops. Uh, what is the opportunity cost of one unit of X? Okay, so if you look at this, uh, what can we say? Uh, and the, the, the six possible options are like, like this. So they, they're there in columns. Now, if you increase X from 40 to 80, you kind of have to let go of the 30 units of Y. So that means, you know, the opportunity cost from going, from going from 40 to 80 is the 30 units of Y. So like for 40 X to get 40 X, you kind of have to give up 30 Y because again, the option with the higher, with, with 40 more X has, 30 less y. So that's what you gave up. That's what you uh, went without. And then you can just do it via the unitary method. Um, let's use variable a as our unknown, which gives you 30 upon 40, uh, which should be what? Uh, 0 0.75. So to give up one unit of x, uh, so, so, so to produce one extra unit of X, you have to give up 0 0.75 units of Y. Uh, that isn't an option. So we can just cross this out. Now let's try to do it in terms of Z. So let me kind of do the same thing again. So look at it like this. If you want to double X or a better way to go about, if you want to add 40 X, you kind of have to give up 20 Z. So the opportunity cost of producing 40 X is 20 Z. What is the opportunity cost of producing one X? Uh, that would be, uh, what would that be? Quick, quick math, 20 upon 40, right? So that is 0 0.5 units of Z for one unit of X. There you go. Three, the, di the diagram shows a production possibility curve for an economy that produces capital and consumer goods. Why is the PPC curve drawn concave to the origin? 
if you remember this the shape of this was because of increasing opportunity cost and the reason was that of because of that was uh, your you, there was wasn't perfect mobility there was uh, imperfect mobility of factors of production so as you switch uh, factors of production the idea was they wouldn't be as efficient in producing the other in, in producing both things they won't be equally efficient so perhaps some units were more efficient in producing capital as i switched them to producing consumer goods uh, obviously now you would suffer from re reduced productivity and hence increased opportunity cost that was the idea uh, and that's denoted by d uh, some resources are more efficient in the in production of some goods than other so yeah they specialized in some they don't they aren't perfectly mobile uh, occupationally at least the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives is a branch of the United States government which regulates markets. What does its main imply is, more, is most likely to be its main responsibility? A, to prevent harm from demerit goods? Yeah, most likely because alcohol, tobacco, firearms, explosives are pretty good examples of goods that have negative externalities, making them demerit goods. So obviously they're not going to be providing subsidies. They're not going to be raising revenue from goods in elastic demand. They're not going to be looking at employment like with a name like that. They're not going to be looking at employment. There's this stupid bird outside my window that keep insists on making a lot of noise. Uh, five, what is treated as a variable in constructing a market demand uh, curve? So your price of the, your good. Why is that? Because the thing here is everything else, even a market demand curve, individual demand curve, it won't really matter in this particular case. And again, in market demand curve is derived by just summing horizontal summing, sum, horizontally summing your individual demand curves. Okay. So stupid bird. Anyhow, uh, so the idea is when you're, when you're when you're deriving your demand curve, everything else is held constant, set this paribus, except for the price. Price and the and the subsequent change in quantity. You can you vary price, and that's how you get different points on the demand curve, right? Uh, if you if you if you didn't, and everything else has to be treated as a as a constant. If it isn't constant, then the demand curve itself will shift. So you only vary the price of the good. Six. The diagram shows how the quantity demanded of four goods changes as income changes, which good has an income elasticity of demand, which is uh, always positive one. Now, be a little careful here. They've kind of inverted the x's, so you have quantity here and you have income here, uh, not normally what you're used to. So, income el elasticity of demand, which is always positive one. All right. All right. So, positive one would mean that the you, that your change, uh, what was the formula again? So there was a, if you look at the formula for YD, that was the percentage uh, change in quantity demanded upon percentage change in income. So it means here the change in quantity demanded has to be equal to the change in income. And you see that in a curve, um, well, if, if I draw this out a little more neatly, if you have, if I fix the X's here, uh, you can call this your rectangular hyperbola, you can call this a decay curve, whatever. But the idea here is that if you change income, it's, it's just a, the, a very nature of uh, such a curve. If you like decrease income by let's say 10%, your quantity demanded, uh, well, oh, oh whoops, 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 sorry, sorry. So your rectangular hyperbola, in fact, gives you a uh, a constant value of minus one. You don't want that. You want positive one. And that in fact would be C. My bad. Um, because the idea here is if you, you kind of put your X's in a more manageable amount, uh, in a more manageable for form. Yeah, let's suppose this is your Y1 and your Q1. If you in increase income by let's to Y2, let's say you increase it by 10%. Quantity demanded would also increase by the same 10% because it's just a straight line, right? Uh, that's the idea. 
uh, B won't be it because if you vary income, quantity demanded would have no effect. Uh, D won't be it because, uh, so sorry, sorry, in B, if you vary income, quantity demanded would have an infinite effect. With D, if you vary income, quantity demanded would have no effect. Uh, with A, varying income will give you a value of, well, it will have, quantity demanded will have the same effect as, as, as income, but in the opposite direction. So that will give you mi minus one, uh, which is why you can rule out the other uh, options as well, also leaving you with C. <coughs> the table shows three different prices and quantities supplied per week of two products, X and Y. Uh, which statement about the PES is correct? Okay, so the PES of X is elastic for a fall in its price from 5, 15 to 10. So the idea here is if it is elastic, then you have to look at the change here. I mean, if you look at the formula for PES, it's percentage uh, change in quantity supplied upon the percentage change in price. So your percentage <clears throat> change in price can be given by 15 div minus 10 uh, divided by 15 in 200. That's somewhat of a 33% change here. In fact, it's a minus 33.3% because um, again, it's a decrease, right? So that's denoted by a minus sign. And if this is elastic, your change in quantity supplied has to be greater than this. So that just gives you an overall value. This fraction gives you a value of greater than one. That's by definition elastic. Um, and do we see that? In fact, we don't see that. We can clearly see that quantity supplied is decreasing by 20%. Uh, so that that's less than 33.3. So if you if you had 20 upon 33.3, it wouldn't would it would not give you a value of greater than one. So it, it isn't elastic. Uh, the PES of X is unitary for a rise in its price from 15 to 20. Now, if you're gonna go from 15 to 20, that's 20 minus 15 divided by 15. In 200 so that's like again a 33 it's a positive 33.3 percent change and uh, for this to be unitary this also has to be a positive 33.3 percent change which isn't true we can see that this is clearly a positive 10 percent uh, increase let me do something about the stupid bird anyhow where are we um, so yeah, so the reason it's not B is because the change in price is 33.3%, but the change in quantity supplied is just 10%. So it's obviously not unitary, unitary where it has to divide. It has to be the same so that the fraction gives you a value of one. Okay, so let's look at C and D a little quickly. Now, um, I don't wanna go through the options all over again. So 80 minus 64 divided by 64 200. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip C. It's you're gonna solve it this relatively the same way we you're gonna eliminate it relatively the same way we did with uh, the you know PES of X. Your answer is gonna be Y. Uh, you, your answer is gonna be D. And the reason for that is because if your price is rising from 40 to um, 50, that is a positive 25% increase. And so is the increase in, in quantity supply. That's positive 25% as well. Which means if you have 25, upon 25, that gives you a value of one as per this formula. Hence, it is uh, unitary. In 2016, car drivers bought more fuel uh, because the price of oil from which from which it was made had fallen, which diagram represents this change in the market for fuel. Now understand, to make fuel, um, they've given it to us that fuel is made from oil. So oil is like a raw material, you could say, for fuel, for making fuel. And if the price of a raw material goes down, we can say the cost of production of, you know, the particular good in this case, 
fuel goes down and if, if you remember decreased cost of production is a factor that increases supply supply increases towards the right so that is like this s2 s2 and there you go that's the only cor correct corresponding answer nine the market demand for a product is made up of the demand from three firms the table shows the demand from each firm and market supply what is the equilibrium uh, price so again that's supposed to be where market demand is equals to market supply so you will basically just and to forget market demand you just add the individual demands of the three firms uh, for each particular price you just, that's what you do you sum it sum those sum up the individual demands and then you you so you basically add them you like you like add all of them you figure out a final value of them here and then you see where it equates with market supply so obviously it can't be when price is seven because it just doesn't uh, seem to be adding it doesn't seem to be adding here either uh, maybe nine let's let me check so that's 2800 plus 2500 plus 2900 that's giving you if you add these three that gives you 8200 so yeah so it's going to be where it's nine because again their market demand is equal to market supply hence it's your equilibrium hence that will be your equilibrium price the diagram represents the market for diamonds what could have caused price change from p to p2 so they're basically asking what could have caused this decrease in supply remember supply decreases to the left Supply increases to the right, demand increases to the right, supply decreases to the left, demand decreases to the left. Okay. Uh, substitutes are like demand factors. Um, a fall in the tax. If tax has fallen, then supply should increase. That's not what's happening here. A rise in the productivity. Rise in productivity should mean supply increases. That's not what's happening here. A rise in the wages of diamond miners again if the price or in this case the wage of a factor of production goes up then the cost of production goes up and if your cost of production goes up that means your supply will go down which is exactly what's happening here so you can go with d now that's it for this video so uh so we'll continue this later in the next one. Let me just quickly check whether I got any MCQs wrong. Okay, so we got all uh, questions right so far. So that's it for this video.